started out, I wanted a million dollars so I could buy my dad a house on a hill or something. You know, I didn't, I didn't see the possibility for a long time hmm. until I was in it. And then I saw it, and then I said, oh, this is more than what I thought it was. This isn't just the vision to, you know, because when you're in television, as I was starting out, the big vision is, oh, gee, can I get a network job? And I had this idea. I literally had said to my agent uh, when I was in Baltimore, uh, I said, could you get me the substitute job for Joan London on Good Morning America? I would just like to, when Joan London doesn't want to be there or when mm -hmm. she's on vacation, could I just have that yeah, job? Fill in. Yeah, fill in. And he said, um, this was 1982, he said, mm, you're not going to get that job because they already have a black person. No, they don't have a black person. So Brian Gumbel already has that job. Well, ABC doesn't have a person. He goes, oh, you're not going to get that job. Not even as a substitute. No, not even a substitute. So I let that, that agent go. But that was my thing. Oh, gee, if I could just get to the network, if I could just get to the network, if you can get to a larger market, if you could get to, and the top three were, you know, New York, Chicago, no, New York, LA, Chicago. I knew it wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to be uh, accepted in LA in 1982 because I wasn't the right minority. And that's why Chicago? And I literally chose Chicago because of that. And then I happened to be, I thought, well, Chicago. And then I was on someone else's tape and I got a call from Chicago. I go, oh, that's a sign. But when you wanted, when you envisioned yourself being a backup, what was the greater goal? That was a, that was a step in the right direction. Okay, so you had something in I, mind. Okay, so my goal was is that I would be the backup for Joan London and they would see how good I was. Mm. And then they want me to back up more. And then when Joan left for a vacation or Joan, you know, decided that she no longer wanted to do it, they'd say, what about that girl that stood in for Joan? Yeah, that was my goal. And then you'd be on air, you'd yeah. be a personality, but again, to what end? Yes, because I didn't have a vision beyond being successful on network television. It wasn't until I was literally on television, mm -hmm. had my own show, made the decision that I was going to own the show, meaning I would take the risk if it worked or it didn't work, that I thought about what does this really mean? And actually, I guess the vision was inspired by, I used to speak in uh, high schools all the time. And I remember speaking at a school and a kid said to me, you're that lady, oh, you're the one, you're the one that plays on TV. And I say, no, I don't play on TV. It's actually my work. Mm. I, I, I use TV as, as my work. And when I, you know, journal every night and was thinking about that, yeah, a lot of people think, think and for a long time I thought it was just a job where you're going to play on TV, you're going to act on TV, you're going to have this job. But it was around probably two or two and a half years into it, around 88, 89, that I started to see, oh, this is bigger than... It's a platform. Yeah, television, that it's actually a platform. And speaking to the KKK and skinheads mm -hmm. one day, when they were, you know, obviously, I thought I'm going to change the way they feel about black people and at least get to what stems from how that vitriol came about. And I realized they were using me, that they understood it was a platform more than I understood. In real time, you realized that while you were taping the show? While I was taping the show. I saw them signaling each other. And something inside myself said, oh, they're using, they're using this and they're using me. Oh, they get what this is. And, you know, for the 25th year, 25th season, I had two of those guys back and they said to me, yes, we were. We used that show as our recruitment tape. We used going on your show as a recruitment tape. But I said after that, that uh, conversation, with the skinheads, I went to my producers and said, I will never do this again. And if I have to do this kind of show, then I will get out of television. Sensationalistic television? Yeah. Um, not just sensationalistic, because um, it, wasn't, it wasn't sensational. It was, I was interviewing them about, why, about their beliefs. So when you said, I won't do that again, what was it? it what was the it? The it was, I understand that this is a platform. It's an energetic, vibrational, Force. You're not going to amplify negative yeah, energy yeah. like I'm that not without do a yeah. specific reason. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do it. 
I'm not going to do it in that any form. That explains why in, in so many shows where you would have a controversial subject or it wasn't always clear what the goodness was, you would actually frame it very explicitly. Yeah. And you would say, this, this is, is why, why, why I'm doing it. This is why I'm doing it. it. Which doesn't even now on the network, it doesn't mean I will not do negative things. It just means I will have to have a framework so that you can see what is the why. Mm. That there is a meaning behind it. That negativity for the sake of neg neg negativity, I don't want to be responsible for. You know, I remember once that uh, I had taped a show on uh, Columbine with the guy who had spent 10 years researching and done this beautiful book about it. And I had gone home that weekend and something inside myself said, you cannot air that show. I taped the show on the Friday, it was supposed to air on that Monday. We were the first ones. I felt bad, I had to call the publisher, I had to call that guy. I knew that if I did that show, that I was somehow going to glorify um, the shooters. And even though we did everything in our power to say, well, this isn't, you know, we said maybe three or four times in the show, this isn't glorifying the shooters. We're really talking about the victims, the victims' families. The fact that you're doing it means you're glorifying it. So over the years, I always use that, um, that incident with the, with the clan. Like, how do I feel about how what the energy that I'm putting out into the world is actually gonna do. Because you're speaking to millions of people. And so I would every day in the elevator, get in the elevator going down, and I purposely did the elevator, not the stairs, so I could have that one minute and, you know, to myself, mm. to ask to be used, to center myself, to ask what I call God, to be used for something bigger than myself. Because you're speaking to a lot of crazy people out there. Mm who can misinterpret what you're saying. So I would ask that my, the, my voice, the words that I chose, come from a place that was centered and centered in um, the desire to be a force for good and to connect in a way that, that, that would be meaningful to people. Which would increase the likelihood that it would be received with That's the right. intention with yeah. which you were delivering it. Yes, because the number one principle that rules my life is intention. And I probably discovered that around 1989 after reading Gary Zukov's book and then bringing him on the show and talking about these um, multi-sensory ideas. Like we are human beings who have a power beyond our five senses. So the, the principle of intention actually changed my life. It changed the way I operated my shows. So after reading Gary's book, I literally uh, had a big meeting with all my producers and I said, we are now going to become an intentional television show. And they're like, what is that? What is that? We are only gonna, we're only gonna do shows that come from a motivation that we're gonna show people the best of themselves. And sometimes you have to show them the worst of themselves in order to see the best of themselves. But the idea behind it, the vision, is that we are going to, we're gonna be a force for good and that is gonna be our intention. That's the bottom line intention. So whatever your ideas that you bring to me, they have to come from, from that force feel. And sometimes producers would come in and I'd say, what is the intention? And they don't know, I go, I can't do it. I can't, I have to be able to find for myself the thread of truth that I can hold onto and sit in the chair mm. and be an authentic person. And that is actually one of the reasons why I let the show go because I felt Around, I'd, I'd started to feel it in the 20, 21st year. How many more time, how many more makeovers can I do? Mm. How many times can I talk to this celebrity? Now the celebrity's been on 12 times, 17 times, it's your 18th time, your 25th time. How many more times can I make that real? How can I come from a space of truth for myself? And I never wanna be able to say that I was faking it. I don't want one day to have said, oh, I have to, you know, pretend a feeling that I'm, I, I really don't have. So I wanted to be able to let it go while I could still be authentic to the word. In terms of the show, but mm -hmm. then you were able to bridge into the network, yeah. which was an even potentially bigger platform. Well, the reason I did the network is finally, as you know, I had my struggles with the network and I, I shall never forget, I wrote it down, I had it on my mirror, when you and I had that conversation and you said you have everything you need. 
And then I would look at that sometimes. I would pray over it, I would cry over it. I would say, I have everything I need, but I don't know, what do I need? Um, so I had a lot of come to Jesus talks with myself about I have everything I need. And I actually said to God, to the universe, in my prayers, okay, what is the real reason I created this network? I created it because my utmost desire as a human being is to live out the fullest expression of that, is how do I blow it all the way out? How do I do what I really came to do, what I was born and made to do? Um, the universe's vision for me, how do I live up to that? Well, I think that one of my true roles on earth is to be an inspiration and to help people to connect to ideas that it inspire and expand their vision of who they can be in the world. That's, and my role is to help connect you to that. My role is to help you link in uh, to the possibility of what that can be. And my role is to break down big ideas about who we are in a way that people can see it and taste it and feel it and know it for themselves. So when I was thinking about what do I really wanna do, I had seen the planet Earth and been so inspired by the planet Earth. I fell in love with the Earth. It gave me a whole new vision of, of appreciating the planet and my role here on the planet. I shall never forget those polar bears coming out of the, you know. Um, and I wanted to interview all the guys who did planet Earth. And what I learned from interviewing the guys who did the planet Earth is that the kind of guy who can watch a polar bear come out of a hole and wait there for six months, it's not the kind of guy you want to interview. <laughs> I saw that show. <laughs> yes. I remember seeing that show. You remember seeing that show? Mm -hmm. When I'm like, uh, so tell me about. But, but you were also incredibly moved and inspired by the show itself. I was so inspired by the visual aspect of it. I was so inspired by how it connected me as a human being. To the rest of the planet. To the rest of the planet. So I wanted to do something like that in terms of what the planet feels, knows, cherishes, and believes. And I started thinking about that. And then within a week, the idea manifested through um, a, a group of producers from part two productions who were doing Lisa Ling's show. So I have this idea, I'm sitting like, what do I really wanna do? What do I create the network for? Would be good if I could do something like Planet Earth, but that's already been done. How could I do that with people's feelings and the way they see themselves in the world? And then within a week, somebody comes in and says, we have this idea uh, for looking at what people believe around the world. And I, I wanted to cry, because I'm like, that's exactly, I manifested that. So I said, I'm in, I'm in. But we were at a point in the network where I did not feel comfortable going to my partners at Discovery, saying, I wanna do this series, because I wasn't even sure how it was gonna take place, how we were gonna make it happen. I wanna do this series that's really not Planet Earth, but it's Planet Spirit, which was our code name for this series. So the first time I saw the pilot, and I made this remark to you when we were catching up on it, you can't help but think this is planet Earth meets spirituality. It is. The, the palette, the ethos, the, the scope, uh, the way it starts to integrate and unify people on a, on a planetary basis. I'm hoping that it will do that. Um, that certainly is my intention. So I know that at some point, some people will see it, and that intention will be fulfilled. But you know, I think that's why we're all here. We're all here to use what each of us has been given um, to the fullest, highest expression of yourself and myself. So my desire to be able to show people themselves, you know, because life is always mirroring it, your life back to you. So to be able to do that through these stories of belief and faith that connect us all at a time where we seem so disconnected, um, that's, that's a real reason to have a network.